all areas of the gym are considered live. If you have any questions about a particular part of the gym, please speak to the GC before the game begins. If a ball enters an unplayable area, first to arrive should dig out the ball and play will resume without a whistle. Players get three seconds to gain control. Players are to keep body and their stick out of the playing area. Players must be at the bench area before a substitute can replace them on the floor. Creases will be established by the GC at the start of the game. Players are not permitted to remain stationary in the goalie's crease. They can carry the ball into the crease and can accept a pass in the crease. Defensive players are permitted to block shots while in the crease. The ball and corner rule is created with the player's safety in mind. Floor hockey can be a very fast-paced game and we want to avoid all injuries. Like this one. When a corner ball has been called, the trailing player should back off and give the leading player a stick's length to play the ball. The leading player now has three seconds to make a pass. The corner rule applies when there are two or more players running at high speed into the corner. The rule does not apply when the ball is carried into the corner or if the play is not at high speed. During a face-off, the ball must hit the ground before players are allowed to make contact with their sticks or their opponent. Players are not allowed to posture for position and they're not allowed to trap their opponent's stick. The goalie may pick up the ball and drop it behind the net to a teammate, who now has three seconds to put the ball in play. If the goalie passes the ball to the side or to the front of the net, the player is not given three seconds to play the ball. At no point is a goalie permitted to leave their crease to gain possession of the ball. When playing the ball, a goalie must have at least one foot in the crease at all times. Goalies are permitted to sweep their stick around the sides of the net, provided they do not interfere with their opponent's movement or play. If a goalie aggressively sweeps their stick and hits an opponent, slashing will be called. Violations are plays that may or may not be intentional, but typically represent unsportsmanlike behavior. Violations do not result in a penalty or a shorthanded play unless they are repeated. Players are expected to call themselves when they have committed a violation, and if they have gained possession of the ball, the ball should be given back to their opponent. You cannot intentionally or unintentionally direct the ball to your teammate with your hand. Hand passes should be blown down by a game's coordinator and a face-off at half should occur. Players and goalies are allowed to catch the ball, however, they must drop it to the floor immediately and play it with their stick. You are not allowed to slide at any time in the game, not to block a shot, pass, or to get in the way of an opposing player. However, shots can be blocked by a standing player or by a kneeling player. A player cannot stick handle with the ball while their back is to the opponent. If a player turns their back with possession, they must turn and face their opponent within three seconds. Remember, the player is never allowed to advance to the net while shielding the ball. This rule is in place to prevent reaching around and the unnecessary body contact. Going over the top, otherwise known as trapping the stick or slashing the stick, is not allowed in any circumstance. Although this is a common move in ice hockey, the aggressive and unsportsmanlike nature of it make it an infraction in our rulebook. A player is allowed to lift their opponent's stick one time in an attempt to gain possession of the ball. Multiple lifts of the stick are considered a violation and if they are aggressive lifts, they may result in a penalty. When a player is moving the ball, you cannot reach around their body to try and gain possession of the ball. However, if the player with the ball is stationary with their back to the play, you can reach around them and attempt to get the ball.
Penalties are dangerous plays, and although they may be unintentional or intentional, they are considered serious offenses. Unlike a violation, when a penalty occurs, the player is required to stop play and serve time off. There are three penalty categories that you need to be aware of. Minor penalties, which result in the player sitting off for two minutes, but the team is not shorthanded. Major penalties, result in the player sitting off for two minutes and the team plays shorthanded. Game misconducts are the most serious penalties given and result in the player being ejected from the gym, the team playing shorthanded, and likely further suspension for the offending player. Our high stick rule is the most commonly confused and contested rule for new players in the club. Since we are a league developed around sportsmanship and require little to no equipment to be worn, our player safety is the number one concern. As such, our high sticking rule is one that is essential to safe league play. The first time a player high sticks in a game, if they call it on themselves or if their teammates call it on them, they will be given a minor penalty. They will need to sit off for two minutes but their team will not be shorthanded. If the GC is required to call the high stick, the player will be given a major penalty and will be required to sit for two minutes and their team will be shorthanded for two minutes. The second time a player high sticks in a game, they will automatically be issued a major penalty and they will be removed from the game and their team will play shorthanded. An exception to the high stick rule is when a goalie is making a save. As long as they are within the crease, they are allowed to use a high stick. Goalies are not allowed to use a high stick in any other situation, including passing the ball, batting it out of the air, or hitting another player. For more specifics on penalties, please review the written rule book.